sein und wer muss das machen, allein. If we think about education over history, the people in power have only really wanted a system that retained their power. Now, the old days, when you had slaves, you didn't have to educate slaves, you did need to have uh, gang masters who could control them, of course, they might be cut above the slaves, but they didn't need to be educated much other than to be shown how to use a whip. And as things got on, you needed a clerical class. You needed a few people to read and write, and the church needed people to write before Paxton started printing. And uh, then you needed, in general, the requisite skills to retain your power, and as for the rest, they just want to obey. And although circumstances have changed radically, I'm not so sure the attitude of the top people has ever really altered from that analysis. And that is why I'm interested in this from a democratic point of view. Uh, of course, the technology has changed enormously, so much so that this is the first generation, you know, where children know more than their grandparents, which is one aspect of it. When my laptop crashes, I ring up the grandchildren and come and press a couple of buttons and I'm back online. But that's a uh, <laughs> rather special aspect of technological training. But you see, the more I think about the 19th century, the more I concluded that the democratic revolution that occurred there was in a way the most fundamental and exciting and revolutionary idea that could possibly be. Because before that, the rich had already hired teachers and uh, uh, didn't have to go to a local authority to get a mortgage for their castle, didn't need unemployment papers, they never worked, uh, and so on and so on. But when the vote came in, people were able to use their vote to buy with their vote what they couldn't afford them. So I was trained to fly in Birmingham. I will study the history of what I'm doing. And after the 1837 Municipal Reform Act, a Birmingham got a council because it wasn't universal and had a franchise, but immediately you got municipal schools, municipal hospitals, municipal fire brigades, municipal museums, municipal art galleries. And what democracy did was to transfer power from the marketplace to the polling station, from the wallet to the ballot. And I think that that was later brought this more fully into the welfare state and so on and so on, that was never accepted by people in power. And this, what's going on now, is an attempt to reverse it. I'll come to that. Mind you, when state education began, it's still funny enough was based on the idea of three sorts of minds, the 1944 Education Act, you know, gold, silver, and lead, I think they said. <laughs> people were classified in that wording. Uh, but the, the, the municipal schools were accountable to local authorities. They were still the 11th class of court, and that uh, selection still goes on. I have friends who are twins, one class the 11th class, and it's done brilliantly in the government department. The other failed and is working in a hotel, I'm not saying any, uh, both very, very brilliant people, but to be told she failed was the biggest moment in her life. And I've met people in middle age, what are you doing? Well, tell me, I failed the 11th class. Is this how a society at that age and classified them as failure? And I think that's not an accident. I think you need uh, to persuade people that failure in order to control them. And therefore, I think the whole idea is not just a negative effect, not, not a positive, you get those several people, but the negative effect of telling people they failed. But even in the Soviet Union, you know, they had uh, schools of nifty truth. And I raised it with Mr. Stroking in the Kremlin. I said, how can you, in this communist society, have schools for gifted children? He gave me a big wink. He said, can't pay them for children, especially gifted parents. So, and they were interested in irritability of me. Ty Chitty, you may know his name from Goldsmith, wrote a wonderful book on eugenics. Yeah, there's someone who was born with that special capacity, ability. And uh, of course, if you go to the parents got the money, uh, that doesn't be helpful in any way. Uh, but this is, this is where we started. And uh, what happened, I think, and this is why I want to relate it back to Mrs. Thatcher, it was a cautious, deliberate counter revolution against democracy. She understood the labor movement better than many of us do. She knew the strength of the labor movement lay in the trade unions, so she turned on and tried to smash the most powerful union, and that was my workers. She knew that local government, where it all began, so she crushed them, and uh, then began the process of privatization, now carried on with even greater enthusiasm by new labor.
Yeah, I had a talk uh, quite nice out, but that was what actually happened.